Hi again then guys, and welcome to episode 10 of GT Masters, the review series for Gran Turismo's selection of racing cars, particularly in the GT category, and also vehicles which aren't necessarily GT class, but share the same traits as GT class vehicles, such as the Zonda R. Now in this particular episode we're featuring a Polyphony Digital Original race car. There are quite a few of these on Gran Turismo, there always have been. And this is a car which is fictional. It may be inspired or based on existing racing cars, but it's not in itself a real car. And this particular model is the fictional Chevrolet Camaro LM race car. And this car has always been Ever since it was first introduced on Gran Turismo, which if I remember correctly was GT3, if my memory serves me correctly, one of my favourite racing cars, because it's just such an underdog. It's the car that people just don't think of, they don't use. And even people who do own the car, such as myself even, don't really give it the credit that it deserves. Now. Don't get me wrong, I don't want to get people's hopes up that this car is some kind of hidden tomahawk. It's not the best GT class car in the game by any means, but it's a highly competitive alternative to many of the more mainstream, far more obvious choices of GT class machine. Now it's powered by, as you'd probably expect, a 5.7 litre V8 engine, it's front engine, rear wheel drive, and fully tuned, it has a very strong spec, which isn't surprising for an American vehicle. They're known for high power and high torque outputs. It puts out 904 horsepower and 694 pound-feet of torque. Now, it weighs in at 1160 kilos, which is pretty good for a car of its size, because the Camaro of this generation is not a small car. So the fact that it weighs 1160 kilos means that it is significantly lighter than many other GT class machines. There are some which it's heavier than, of course, but it falls in the lower end of the pack as far as weight, which is always a good thing. As far as horsepower per tonne, it puts out 779, which again, isn't going to lead any records or, or lead any pack or break any records, but it's still more than good enough. As far as PP, it sits at 659, which I would say is pretty good for this car. Perhaps a little bit too high, I'd say 650 would probably be more accurate for the car's ability. But still, 9 PP over isn't too much, there are cars which are far worse than that. As far as price, this model costs 1,450,000, so it is on the lower end spectrum of the GT class machines. That puts it on par with the Gillette Vertigo that we reviewed a couple of days ago and various other models. It means it's the same price as the Corvette C5R race car, and that car is probably this vehicle's main rival, arguably. So how does it compare to the Corvette, seeing as they are the same price? Is this worth buying instead of that car? And also, how does it compare, more generally speaking, to the other GT class machines? Well, for on paper performance, the Camaro isn't that amazing. The top speed is around 230, 235, and the acceleration is good, but not outstanding. Because even though it has a lot of power, it suffers with a problem that some of the GT class machines have, funnily enough usually the V8 ones with a large body style, that all of that power and torque doesn't quite add up to the performance that you'd expect. And there are a few vehicles that suffer from that. The Tickford suffers from that, the Camaro, as we said, the NASCARs to some degree, and also some other American racing cars do suffer from that issue. And it's unfortunate because the car does deserve to be quicker than that. However, there are very few circuits where you need to do 230 miles per hour. There are only maybe three or four, and those are Route X, Route 7, the Le Mans, and perhaps the Nuremberg Ring. But even then, you're not going to generally get up to that kind of speed on the Nuremberg Ring unless you've got an amazing amount of draft. 
So for most tracks, that doesn't really matter. It's, it's semantics, really. That kind of top speed is nearly useless the majority of the time. As far as acceleration, as I said, it's not leading the pack, but it's a 900 horsepower Camaro-based racing car, so it's quick. And for its PP, it's very quick as well, being significantly lower than something like a GT3 class Nissan GTR or a Z4 GT3 from BMW, etc. And in terms of the way the car performs, I would actually say it's very unique. And this is one of the reasons why I love the Camaro LM so much personally. I love cars that are different from the crowd. And when you first look at the Camaro, it's the kind of vehicle which is quite easy to overlook. It doesn't look that amazing. It's a Camaro, it's arguably based on one of the less pretty Camaros. It's quite a big bulky looking car anyway. And what they've done to the car is as far as Polyphony Digital Originals go, relatively minimal. The body kit is quite modest, the wing isn't particularly crazy, it's a relatively understated racing car. And I think that this vehicle, personally, looks almost like a NASCAR to some degree. I mean, it's obviously not, but it shares some of those body characteristics. Maybe that's just the sheer size of the vehicle and the minimal body kit. But I like the way the car looks. And I like the way the car performs, because it has, technically, the spec of a GT car. Visually, the spec of a NASCAR to some degree. But handling-wise, it's actually more like a touring car. It handles like an oversized DTM machine. And I would say that's a good thing. Because the handling on touring cars is known for being very forgiving and very smooth, and I would say that that is what marks this car. It may not be as quick as the Corvette, or some of the others, but for its PP, the handling is smooth, it's a forgiving car, and this is the kind of car which can serve you well, especially on endurance races where it's lap after lap. It's a good endurance car. But that's it for this episode, I'll see you guys next time, and as always, thanks for watching.